day back for another interview at the APOR conference with Masa Aida at uh, 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 Greenberg Quinlan Rosner. He's the director of analytics for the Democratic firm Greenberg Quinlan Rosner that does the Democracy Corps polling. Uh, presented a, a study on uh, uh, looking at likely voter screens and uh, vote validation. Uh, you did something really remarkable, which was to take about 11,000 interviews mm -hmm. uh, that you were able to match, done by GQR this last fall, right. matched to their actual voting behavior, because you were doing a lot of list sampling, right. uh, and then looking at how likely to vote screen questions predicted actual vote. Tell us about that. Right. Uh, what we did was, uh, there are a lot of literature, like every student has to learn about uh, over-reporting because of the social desirability. But then, what we, our biggest finding was essentially it's, uh, it's under-reporting, which is not in textbook, in typically, because there in theory, by theory, there should be no motivation for people to under-report your voting intent. So uh, once we uh, appended actual vote history, so in uh, mm -hmm. typical practice of us, poll poster is we ask, are you gonna vote or not? And then we often you know, take decide whether we should continue interviewing them or stop and can just terminate them. But then after appending vote history, we saw a moderate amount of over-reporting which we knew by research of Presser or Mike Allot, but but the, what was stunning for us was really high proportion of non-likely voters actually voting. Right. Okay. So let, let, let's focus on that. So you ask a question that says uh, some voters say they're they're uh, uh, I don't have it, but absolutely certain or highly likely to vote or mm -hmm. very likely to vote, and then you t treat all the others, those who say they're sort of fifty-fifty or less, as non-likely. Right. And a very large percentage of the non-likely voters, I think it was 64 percent well, or so. Well, say given, say I will not vote. Right. Say, you know, 76 percent. So a big not. share of those who say they're not voting do vote. It ends up being a relatively small percentage of those who are likely voters. Is that right? About four or five percent. Um, I mean, you're, if you're asking for those right. people who are we are terminating, that's right. fairly small, yes. So we're, we're losing some people who are likely to vote with a likely voter screen, and including a whole lot of people who are not. Well, actually, uh, the... Is that right? That's right and wrong. In terms of, like, say, uh, actual, say, people who says... Uh, many people actually like to say almost certain to vote. So in terms of actual frequency, mm -hmm. it's not that huge okay. in terms of people who says I will not vote right. or undecided right. or refusal. Okay. So what were, what are you proposing that, that pollsters do uh, to improve on selecting likely voters? Um, well, this question should be uh, even more uh, relevant in, like, say, non presidential year because uh, presidential year tend to have a really high turnout. I think most so recent CPS more relevant in 2010. Yes, and, and, and also years. if you're working with a municipal election, such as any state level, or sometimes we do a lot of work in state house elections, right. and th those elections tend to have a really t uh, low turnout, it's especially uh, you, if you could think about, say, Virginia stuff mm -hmm. or. New Jersey or Michigan house race, which take place in odd year and with low salience, um, that's when I think uh, people's uh, self-report might be fairly uh, unreliable measurement, and that's what we typically use. Right. So you want to incorporate, you, you, you're proposing more using list sampling, mm -hmm. uh, where you can incorporate actual vote history as well as the screen questions right. into a combined model. Uh, which is what you did in this case, right? And you found you reduced, you, you, you came up with a more accurate uh, uh, likely voter selection. Right. Did it improve the quality of the estimate, the vote estimate? Well, that's a great question. Uh, to be honest, uh, for particular, uh, it's actually fairly difficult to assess that because those are people, uh, if once you report, I will not going to vote, we don't actually ask any other questions. So we mm -hmm. never ask if, whether you're going to vote for McCain or Obama mm -hmm. for those people who says I will not likely to vote. Mm -hmm. But then we actually focus on a uh, couple uh, covariates such as party registrations because right. we know it's highly correlated with the right. vote. And while there are actual like a clear trend in terms of propensity and party res, because if you're working with say Democrats, they tend to have much lower turnout propensity 
But then looking at the people with high propensity, they tend to be much older, more Republicans. Mm -hmm. But in this particular uh, instance, we didn't really see any systematic biases by compelling uh, our traditional screening we used in that cycle and new proposed method. All right. Well, we will look forward uh, to hopefully hearing more about your work in the months and years ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Ada. Thank you.